you know, the outside impression about what's going on today in various parts of the Middle East and elsewhere is that all of these raging conflicts involve, in one form or another, Muslims or Arabs. And so the general perception is that Muslims as such, or Islam as a religion, is a sort of the culprit uh, behind all these acts of violence. And I think this is significant misperception, because if you look at the total Muslim in the world of nearly one billion, four hundred million Muslims, certainly those who are engaged in violence are extremely a small fraction of that. We're not talking about millions, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands. So there is a significant misperception there. But unfortunately, however, religion is being used as a tool, as a mean by which various groups trying to impose their will on other groups. In this respect, religious leaders have a very important role to play. And, and that is, if you ask what this religion is all about, be that Islam, be that Judaism or Christianity, is to project compassion, uh, brotherhood, understanding, uh, amity, peace. This is what religion is all about and that's what should be promoted. When religious leaders, however, take a similar political position, it becomes a, a major problem. That is, when you mix politics with religion, then the borderline not only becomes a blur, but becomes dangerous, because how do you really reconcile that? I am not suggesting that you cannot reconcile politics with Islam. Yes, of course you can. But that is where it is tricky, that you're going to require someone with vision, somebody with um, understanding and respect uh, those who are faithful to, to the, their religion. On the same token, also begin and to understand that politics is also a tool by which to serve the community. Uh, Turkey provides uh, perhaps a, a good example, but even Turkey itself is not there yet. But it can show that the possibilities are there and the religious leader ought to play a significant role in trying to promote the concept that Islam and politics and democracy are not contradictory, but rather it can be consistent. You know, as a matter of principle, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's wise uh, to, to combine the two. That is, when you have, uh, again, if we go to the Middle East, Islam is a part of the culture uh, in a very strong way. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a cultural orientation, not just religious orientation. Whereas in the West, uh, religion has assumed a gradually second, second place. So in the United States, the revival of, of religious uh, movement and conservatism I don't think it's healthy uh, for the United States uh, because we are a different kind of power. We have, uh, we have a constitution uh, that it is based on um, <clears throat> different kind of political precepts. Religion is important, but it is, there's a clear rule in the United States, a separation between the religion and state. And that is very important to keep in mind. The moment you have a candidate who try to use religion as a tool by which he or she try to advance their political objective, that is a, a dangerous situation and ought to be uh, you know, carefully dealt with. Uh, because in the final analysis, the United States in particular ought not to fall into this kind of trap because it's a no-win no, no win situation. So I think uh, the uh, Romney was the presume uh, the candidate for the Republican Party may have used religion a bit too much and he ought to be careful uh, because I think this may even backfire against him in the, in the, in the end should he not steer a more you know, middle uh, course than he has taken thus far.